It can only be God. It can only be God. The favor you receive, the blessings you receive. The, the Synagogue Church of All Nations, one of Africa's most prominent evangelical churches, was once a beehive of activities. Its late founder, Prophet Temitope Balogun Joshua, was an influential personality whose charisma, prophecies, and spiritual ability to perform miracles attracted people from every nook and cranny in the world. It's in fact no secret that his church pulls the largest number of religious tourists every year in Nigeria and other Christian foreigners who crave to drink from his well of spiritual knowledge. Unfortunately, just months after he suddenly gave up the ghost on June 5, 2021, breaking millions of followers' hearts, his mega church and its vicinity are slowly becoming a ghost town. For those doing business within the vicinity of the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Ikotun, Lagos, the death of its founder, Prophet T.B. Joshua, has brought untold hardship to business owners who now believe that businesses around the church died along with the founder. It also looks like the late Prophet T.B. Joshua's shoes are too big for his widows to fill as the new evangelist. Evelyn has reportedly not been able to pull the kind of attention and crowd a late husband did effortlessly. This begs the question, does this sad hardship mark the end of the late T.B. Joshua's legacy? T.B. Joshua left without naming a successor. Hello guys, it's t here for African Glitz. If you don't live under a rock, then you would know that the late prophet T.B. Joshua needs absolutely no introduction. Until his death, the renowned man of God was more popular than Buhari, the incumbent president of Nigeria. He was adorned by his millions of followers in Nigeria, Latin America and other parts of the world. In his lifetime, the televangelist was the most charismatic pastor in Nigeria, which equally made other pastors dislike and dissociate themselves from him. If the Bible verse that says, by their fruits we shall know them, is anything to go by, then we can say that the late prophet bore as many fruits. His teachings were widely broadcasted on Emmanuel TV, drew many from far and wide, seeking to draw from his well of knowledge. To a point, Joshua was dubbed the opera of evangelism and the most popular pastor on YouTube. The Synagogue Church of All Nations headquarters, located at Ikotun Egbe, Lagos State, doubling as a grand edifice structured to contain more than 20,000 worshippers, a quarter of whom were foreigners, was a major destination for people seeking miracles and healing from all kinds of infirmities and disabilities. President, vice presidents, head of state and top politicians trooped en masse to his church and testified to his anointing owing to his prophetic abilities. The poor and the needy were not left out. They made Joshua's church grounds their second home where they sought food, water and shelter. Just as people throng Imano Cathedral, the same way businesses around the area thrived. Ikotunegbe, a lesser-known town in Lagos State, was brought to life by the heavy traffic of T.B. Joshua's followers, transforming it into a boom town. But you all know the saying, there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to live, and a time to die. Sadly, for T.B. Joshua, death came too early. Just a week before his 58th birthday and two months after suffering from a stroke, the well-loved man of God passed away on June 5, 2021. As a cleric well known as the husband of widows, a father to many orphans, and one who gave hope to the hopeless, his demise threw the whole country into mourning. While people commiserated with his followers, they claimed they took it in good faith because their father in the Lord had predicted his death. Unfortunately, whether this was true or not, it was clear that the charismatic pastor failed to name who would succeed him. While still alive, T.B. Joshua worked with a group of close disciples, known as the wise men, who he groomed to succeed him. But following the demise of the revered prophet, the church was reportedly turned upside by these disciples. An insider told the BBC that some of them did not approach the late prophet's widow, Evelyn Joshua, equally as a senior pastor in the church with respect and maturity. Eventually, the widow was faced with the challenge of maintaining a late husband's legacy even while still mourning discovered huge cases of fraud and theft. Sources claimed that some of her late husband's loyalists broke into the church vault at night and emptied the cash with huge Ghana must go bags. They also reportedly put up T.B. Joshua's private jet for sale and asked international partners to donate to the Emmanuel Global Network without the knowledge of Evening Joshua. As if that wasn't enough, 
These disciples ganged up against his widow, preventing her from joining the church board of directors and assuming leadership of the church. This resulted in Evelyn calling the EFCC on them. About 20 foreign and Nigerian disciples were invited for questioning over alleged fraud and diversion of funds donated to the church. Much later, videos emerged of some members, primarily foreigners, being forced to vacate the guest house in a church compound amid jeers. Unfortunately, while this church cleanup and tussle for succession between top pastors and Evelyn Joshua Camp was ongoing, devoted church members, especially foreigners, were reportedly living in droves, causing the business to begin crumpling. Hotels, restaurants and other commercial shops experienced some of the lowest patronage in a long time. Their only prayer was that whatever was going on in the church be resolved in time, hoping that things would turn around and return to normal. Having established the incompetency of these disciples, those loyal to Evelyn secured a court order making her a member of the committee and smoothing the path for her to assume control and leadership of the church. On September 12, 2021, the church announced the late prophet's widow as the new leader, in quote, under the guardians of God. Most people admitted that her appointment came as a surprise because while her husband was still alive, she preached every now and then, but he never really recognized her. Regardless, Evelyn was ecstatic about continuing her late husband's legacy. She, however, refused to inherit her late husband's title as general overseer, saying it was still in charge and only, in quotes, commenced the journey from where our father left the button. It turned out that succeeding her husband would not be the biggest hurdle. Proving a spiritual credential to the thousands of followers who had done the husband and trooped to the church for his charisma, wisdom, and anointing, unfortunately, ease. They expected no less from Evelyn, who has now been charged with maintaining the legacy her husband built from the ground up with his sweat. Initially, the church recorded a massive turnout, as seen on November 8, 2021, when Evelyn led its first service since the passing of its founder. Unfortunately, this story gradually changed months after under the watch of Evelyn. The church, which used to be a boom town, has strangely become as quiet as a graveyard. While it's still not clear why this is happening, sources claim the controversy surrounding the widow's succession did not only drive many members away permanently, but also resulted in some loyal disciples of a late husband leaving the church to establish their own ministries. But the most important fact is that Evelyn Joshua has also not been able to pull the kind of crowd that her husband did effortlessly. The sad incident has begun to have a ripple effect on Ikotun Egbe, the town where the church is located. The crowd from the church, which used to rub off on the environment, making it bubbly and the perfect location for businesses to thrive, is slowly becoming a ghost town. Commercial outlets, including hotels, eateries, and stores, are complaining about very low patronage and have been hit with hardship. Hotel and restaurant owners who used to smile at the bank are now putting up their buildings for lease or sale, while those who took loans from the bank say they are being haunted by the banks over their inability to service these loans. This begs the question, why is the Synagogue Church of All Nations becoming a graveyard under the leadership of the late T.B. Joshua's widow, Evelyn Joshua? Is it because she is not as charismatic as her husband or has not been able to prove her spiritual credibility? Does it have to do with her being a woman in a powerful position? Pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Share your opinion in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, please comment, like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more well-researched African stories and news we know you would like. Click on the bell sign to be notified every time you upload a new video so that you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and see you on our next one.